go ahead and have a couple of cushions. And then if you are able to get two blocks, that would be wonderful. Um, if you don't have blocks, I think most of you do, but if you don't have blocks, you do want to have at least one block, preferably two if possible, um, or something to, to lean on. And we'll go ahead and just get started. So whenever you've gathered your items, your props, and anything else that you like to have for class, Let's find a seat, in a comfortable seat of position. I hope you've been having everyone a good weekend. Uh, it's been nice here, which has been such a such a treat, right? The fog is breaking a little bit here in the Bay Area. It's been just uh, so delightful. So I'm feeling gratitude for that today. And when you're ready, let your hands just relax on the leg. You can go ahead when you're ready and softly close the eyes. And we'll start today just with some gentle shoulder rolls. So on the in-breath, bring the shoulders up to the ears. And on the out-breath, let the shoulders draw down the back. We're just starting with really nice, slow shoulder rolling. And as you're doing that, the breath flows down. We take a full breath cycle to draw the shoulders up, a full inhale, and a full exhale to let them drop down. Do this three more times. And invite just a more relaxed state as you're doing the rolls, especially if shoulders and neck are a little tight today. And then when you feel ready, go ahead and reverse. So inhale, shoulders draw up and exhale forward and down. And begin to just notice the sound. Sounds of Daniel's beautiful guitar playing. The sound of your breath. Any other sounds that you're noticing? And then when you're ready, come back to center. Give the arms a little shake side to side. And find that position where the head is over the heart. The heart is over the pelvis. The body is long and tall in the spine. Bring in just a little bit more softening at the facial muscles around the eyes and jaw. And take an inhale, feel the breath returning into a full state. And feel the breath on the exhale through your nose, really softening and inviting you to let go. So when we come into the practice of yoga, we're actually returning into a state of deep breathing and deep present time awareness. And it may be a state that we're familiar with, we come to practice a lot, or perhaps it's one that we're not so familiar with. But it is a natural state, just deep breathing, in this place of being in present time awareness. It is the state that we're actually in when we're relaxed and fully taking in life. So notice how you feel today. How the body is. How the mind is. emotional tone remembering that we're we're never separated into different parts that we are always whole so something that is happening in the mind is going to affect the body something in the body will affect the mind and same with the emotional state right it can affect the mind and the body so we're all you know connected and intertwined and we do this check-in just to notice sometimes 
in different, we'll call it aspects of our awareness, we can begin to notice things more palpably than in others. And when we work on uh, moving our bodies, it helps our mind and our emotions. And when we come into the place of being clear, clear or steady in our mind, it helps our bodies and our emotions. When we feel resilient in our emotions or at least deeply connected and in tune with them, it impacts the mind and the body. So feeling into the whole of you, how you're doing today. If you're not doing great, that's okay. That's invited into practice. So as you're breathing, just deepen your breath, breathing to the top of your inhale. And the bottom of your exhale. Hearing the sound of your breathing. Begin to find that state where you are deepening in your breath awareness, but also relax. We're going to take one minute just to be present with whatever is here. Remembering that you are held. Even if it's not an easy practice for you, see if you can just be here in this place of stillness. Connecting to your breath for a few more rounds. Allowing a little bit of spaciousness this morning. Allow your body to feel spacious, your mind to feel spacious, and your emotional tone. Feel your connection to the earth. With the earth and its changing season, right now as I was speaking last week at that moment in time where we're at those dog days of summer, and the very slow beginnings of fall are starting to be shown. Slightly shorter days. Maybe a, a little bit of change of color in the leaves, even if it's very subtle. A little bit of golden tone, deepening of red. Feel that connection to the earth, remembering that you are also the earth and that there's something in you that's also slightly shifting and changing right now. And feel a connection to your body from your feet, through your legs, through your belly, your back, your pelvis, out through your arms, through the crown of the head. Feel an extension go up to the sky, to the moon, it's waxing toward fullness this upcoming week. Feel that connection to the expansiveness. It can be easy to forget that in our day-to-day -day, that we live in this expanding, stunning universe. All kinds of mystery. And bring your awareness back to the chest and heart and take three breaths. So feeling your breath awareness expanding from the chest and heart out into the body, into the arms, into the legs. 
It's calling in whatever you need from our practice. And then when you're ready, you'll slowly circle your arms around you. Bringing the palms to touch and hands come to the heart three times. Seated sun salutation. Full inhale. Full exhale. Last time, third time, just creating the boundary for practice. And when you're ready, let your hands rest on the legs, arms relax. You'll softly just flicker the eyes open. So we're gonna start on all fours. And hey, Lauren, good to have you. So let's begin in tabletop position. If you didn't hear me on the props, just a couple of cushions, blankets, pillows, things like that. And then if you've got two blocks, we'll have two blocks for today's class. So first, let the belly just relax, gazing a little bit uh, forward towards the fingers. And then draw the belly in and feel the back rounding, head is dropping. And I didn't ask, um, maybe someone just give me a thumbs up who's on screen. Let me know, does Daniel's guitar playing volume sound okay? Give me uh, a thumbs up or a something. <laughs> if it's too soft, let me know. Okay, I think I saw that, Susan. Yeah, great, perfect, thank you. Yeah, you can always unmute yourselves too. If it's too loud or too soft, just let me know. So let's do three more, everyone. Just finding this nice, gentle undulation on the spine. If your neck and shoulders are a little bit cranky today, make sure that you are being gentle with the head. So you're just gazing at your fingers with cow, and then you're letting the head drop in cat. Not too forceful or anything. Let's take three more breaths. Rooting down through all 10 fingers very gently. If your hands are bothering you today, you can always come to your fists or forearms. And let's do just one more. And make your way back to center. Now we're gonna bring our big toes to touch knees, go a little bit wider about like child's pose. Walk your hands to the right and then draw your hips towards the left. So doing a little side bend here. So you might come all the way back to child's or you might be just lifted a little bit off of your heels. Okay, you're gazing straight down and then come back to center. Walk your hands back to center. Keep your legs how they are. Bring your hands to the other side, to the left and then draw the hips to the right. Just feeling that side bend. Then let's come back one more time on each side. Walk your hands to the right, hips towards the left and back a bit. And then come back slow and steady to the left and hips go to the right. And then come back, back to center. Now bring your knees under your hips, pad the knees if you need, tuck the toes. And we're going to lift the right leg up and off of the ground, parallel to the ground if you can. So toes pointing down, left toes are tucked under too. This helps with a little bit of stability. And reach your left arm forward in front of you. Palm is facing to the right. Gentle um, spreading through your left hand, little gentle spreading through your back foot, your right toes. And then bring elbow to knee, just a little curl in, little balance. And inhale, reach. Let's do two more. So exhale, curl in. You can gaze toward the navel. Inhale, reach, gaze into the hand. Okay, do one more. And bring hand down and knee down. And we'll switch. You could also be up on your fist if you need. So lift the left leg parallel, toes pointing down, right toes tucked under, and reach the right arm in front of you. Palms open to the left. Feel a full extension, then draw elbow to knee. Inhaling. And elbow to knee. So the low back and core is engaged the whole time. One more. <clears throat> and hand down, knee down. Now from here, we're gonna come up onto our fifth. Everyone come up onto your fifth. 
and lift your right leg up, but point your toes. We've done this a bit recently. Draw your left hand to your heart. So hand to chest. You can either stay here or reach the left arm back and maybe hand to foot. If you can't quite get it, it's okay. You can just have hand to heart. Okay, let's do one more breath. And lower hand down, knee down, come back up to the foot. So try not to be uh, discouraged if you can't quite get the leg. Okay, so extend the left leg, bend the knee, point the toes. Remember, option one is to have right hand to heart. You might stop there today. Option two is to reach your hand back. Option three is maybe hand comes into contact with the foot. <clears throat> Let's take just one more breath. Okay, gently release. And then we're gonna lay onto uh, the ground and come onto your forearms into Sphinx Pose. So feet go just a little bit wider here. Yeah, toes are untucked. Feet are about as wide as your mat or almost as wide as your mat. Okay, and bring your elbows just a teeny bit forward of your shoulders, so about an inch forward of where your shoulders are. Now engage the core and gaze either between your forearms or between your thumbs. So feel the knees start to lift a little bit off of the ground. Feel the core start to lift. You either stay here if you're at your edge or maybe you straighten your arms if that feels okay with the low back. Okay, just getting a little low back stretch today. And everyone bend your elbows, one hand on top of the other, forehead to the hands, and just move the hips side to side. Let your low back relax. Just getting a nice release here for the hips and low back. Then bring your hands by your chest, by your sides, tuck your toes, come up to all fours to tabletop, and we'll find downward facing dog. We'll take about five or so breaths. So hips lift up, remember you're gazing back and your feet are about hip width apart. Your knees are bent, your head and neck is relaxed. Move the head a little bit side to side and a little bit up and down. Pressing down strongly through your arms and feel a little sway here of the hips. Just move the hips a little side to side. You can begin to straighten one leg and bend the opposite knee. Do that a couple of times. And everyone, rise to your tippy toes. Bend your knees, gaze forward, and walk to the top of your mat. As many steps as you need. Come to forward fold with your feet, hip width apart, bend the knees, and bring your hands to opposite elbows. Gently. Here, the belly is relaxed between the legs and let your head and neck relax and just sway. We'll take a couple of sways, move the head, give it a little shake, a little shake of the head and neck. <clears throat> and come back to center. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Good, exhale, lower. And the knees, inhale, rise to the sky, reach up tall, you can lift the gaze. And bring your hands to the heart. Inhale, circle your arms around, and lift the gaze. Exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, and slowly step back, downward facing dog. Come through a little flow here. So inhale, come forward to plank, top of a push-up. Couple of breaths, do your very best to have butt level with shoulders, core is engaged. You're gazing between your hands and lower your knees. Lift your feet, cross one ankle over the other. Like a push-up, try to go as slow as you can. Slow motion, elbows drawing in, 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 slow, 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 all the way down. Then extend your legs back, lift them up off of the ground. Feet are as wide as your mat, reach your arms back. Palms face up, take three breaths. Inhale, feel a little lift. Exhale, softening, two more. Last one. Find child's pose. Knees go wide, hips to the heel. Now you're going to bring your elbows on the ground and palms touch, mid-upper back stretch. Bring your forehead back down. Three breaths here, just breathing. If the neck and shoulders are stiff, so your palms are touching, fingers pointing up. 
and then come to all four to tabletop. Now, from here, I want you to get, if you've got a block or some sort of pillow or something, you're gonna bring it to the front edge of your mat, everyone. Just have something there. It can be anything, really, with just a little height to it, okay? So we're gonna step our right foot forward between the hands. Tuck the back toes, lift the back leg, wiggle the back foot long, lower the back knee, untuck the toes. And walk your right foot an inch to the right, and then bring your hands up to your hips here. So low lunge, make sure to get a little padding under that back knee if you need. And you wanna gaze down to your right big toe. Yeah, and you just got your block or prop in front of you. You're gonna reach that left arm up like you're raising your hands. Good, palm faces to the right. Little side bend to the right. So you're just gonna arc your left arm a little bit to the right. Try to keep that right knee straight ahead. And then let your right arm just relax down by your side. So a lot of the time, we've done this before many times, we stay here. We're gonna add one more thing to it. So you're gonna take your right arm, bend your elbow, and take your right fingers towards your left hip, towards your left hip, okay? So the back of the hand, the back of the right hand is to the left hip. Okay, just gaze straight ahead, getting a little bind here and lower the hands down, inside edge of the front foot. Now pivot your right toes off to the side, just a little out to the side, and get either your pillow, your block, your blanket. If you're using a block, I like to bring it at this setting, the lower wider, and you're gonna bring your forearms to this prop. Let me close this window. It's a loud truck outside. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but try and minimize that sound. <clears throat> so, here, with the forearms down, if you need more height, you can always go to a taller setting or have a couple of cushions. Let the inner edge of your right foot lift off of the ground a little bit. And then let your head relax. We're getting into a nice thigh stretch here. Lizard pose. If it feels all right, you can move a little bit right to left. Just a little side to side. If that doesn't feel right, you can just stay center. And then come back to center, everyone. Bring that foot back down and come back up to your hand. Now from here, we're gonna take our left hand off of our mat to the left, right hand to right thigh. So getting another thigh stretch. Just feel your chest open to the side. Good, and now let's come back all fours. So bring that right leg back and move your hips side to side. It's nice openings for the, for the hips today. When you're ready, inhale, step your other foot forward, your left foot forward between your hands. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, wiggle that foot long, and then bring your knee back down, untuck the toes. Walk your left foot an inch to the left and bring your hands to your hips. So you want your legs, you know, pretty far apart here. That's why I lift the back leg both times when we do it. Keep your left big toe, big toe at your vision so you can see that left big toe. Left hand at left hip, raise your right arm. Take a nice inhale, then exhale, come to a little side, bend to the left. <clears throat> your gaze is just soft in front of you. Keep that knee straight ahead. Now let your left arm just relax. You can't see my arm, right? It's cut off in the screen if you're looking. Just resting. Now you're gonna bend your left elbow, take the back of the hand here to the right hip. That can't quite reach, just find what you can anywhere from the low back to the right hip. Keep your gaze straight ahead. Good. Arm is still arcing across. And lower the hands down, inside edge of the front foot. Pivot the left toes off to the left and find your block. The height that you did on side one, try it here and you can always change it. If you need it higher or lower, bring your forearms down to your block and allow that inner edge of your left foot to lift a little bit off of the ground. Let your head and neck relax. Just breathing here. Jaw is soft. And go ahead and bring your foot back down, come back up. Bring your right hand off to the right, left hand to left thigh, and then you can open your chest to the left. Just doing a little side stretch here. 
Great, everyone. You're just opening to the left. Okay, come back to all fours. And we're gonna come to our forearms and just move your hips a little bit right to left. Now, if you've got any chronic shoulder pain, where I'm going next, you are always invited to come um, to regular down dog, but if it feels okay, we're gonna try and see if we can do down dog on our forearm. So you're gonna have your palms touching. We're gonna start there. Have your elbows under your shoulders, tuck your toes, and find downward facing dog here on your forearms with your knees a little bit bent. Let your head and neck relax, but keep your head so it's just like hovering a little bit off of the ground. So you're not letting your head touch the ground. Five breaths. If you need, you could always come back to a regular downward facing dog if it's too challenging. Otherwise, try to stay with it, everyone. Pressing down through both forearms equally. Stay connected to your breath. Don't lock the knees. Bring your feet just a smidge closer together and lift your right leg off the ground. Just three breaths, working a little bit of our fire and heat. Bring that foot down. Inhale, lift your left leg up and off the ground. Do your best. Okay, lower. Now walk your feet back. We're gonna come to forearm plank. Oh, all the heat. Gaze just to your thumbs. And lower your hips down. Untuck the toes, palms down. Remembering everything is temporary, right? So elbows just a little bit forward of your shoulders, just like we did earlier. Feel the knees start to lift. You're welcome to stay here, or you can straighten your arms and you're just gazing slightly down and slightly forward. Take one more breath. Elbows bend, one hand on top of the other. Switch which hand is on top from how you habitually might do that. Forehead down and move your hips right to left. Slowly, when you're ready, we'll come back, downward facing dog, no rush. And we'll take about five or so breaths in that pose, just a steady, find that place of both strength and stillness, just down dog on the hair. Jaw is relaxed. Stay connected to your breath. One more breath, everyone. And inhale, rise to your tippy toes. Bend your knees, gaze forward and step to the top of your mat, forward fold. Feet go outer hip width apart. Bend the knees, hands to opposite elbows, other arm on the bottom and gentle pendulum sway, moving side to side. Move that head and neck side to side too. And come back to center. Hands down, bend the knees, and inhale, rise all the way up to the sky, reach up tall, and bring the hands to the heart. And inhale, circle the arms around. Exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, bend the knees. Now step your left leg to the back of your mat. Wiggle it back really far. You're gonna pivot the outer edge of that foot down. Slowly, we're gonna rise up warrior two, like you're doing a cartwheel, a reverse cartwheel, arms parallel. So find your way into warrior two and bring your gaze towards the left, so towards the wide side, right? Keep your arms both strong, but also find the softness. So your torso is facing the left side, the wide side, and then you're gonna gaze forward, but keep your torso facing that side. Press down through your back foot, bring your back hand down the back thigh, reach the right arm up, little reverse warrior, and then come into extended side angle, forearm on the thigh, left arm across the ear, feeling that reach. Just a little flow here, inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse. Good, come back, forearm on the thigh, arm across the ear. And then come back, warrior two. And to reverse. Now this time, we're gonna add a little something different to it. So you're gonna take that back hand, the left hand, bend the elbow, back a hand to low back or to your right hip. Somewhat similar to what we did in that kind of side 
bend. Little reverse with a bind. Now keep the bind and draw your right form on the right thigh. Chest and heart is open just a little to the side. <clears throat> Good. Now from here, you're gonna slowly unwind the bind and bring your left hand down, lift your back foot, come back to plank. We're gonna bring our feet to touch, roll to the outer edge of your left foot and bring your right hand to your right hip. If it's too much, remember you can come down to your knees, pivot the left toes off to the left and lift the right leg, right hand to hip. Either option is okay, everyone. Side plank on your knees or both legs straight. One more breath and come back down to all fours. Move hips side to side and find your way back. Downward facing dog or child's pose. Three breaths. Remember to keep a little bend of your knees. Strong rooting to the earth. Hips start to rise a bit towards the sky. And rise to your tippy toes, bend the knees, gaze forward, and walk to the top of your mat. Forward folds. Hands can be either to the ground or, if you want, to your block. If you've got tight hamstrings or sensitive low back, I do recommend using a block if your legs are straighter. Then bend the knees, inhale, rise all the way to the sky, reach up tall and bring your hands to your heart. Let's inhale, circle around. Exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, bend the knees. Now you're gonna bring your right leg, step it back to the back of your mat. Slowly pivot the outer edge of that foot down and rise up in that reverse cartwheel to warrior two pose. Doesn't have to look like how I came in, right? Just find your way up into warrior two, everyone. With your arms strong, again, soft in the shoulders, and bring your torso to face towards the right now, towards the long direction. And then gaze over your left hand, reach through your back foot. Such a great stretch for the body. From here, take your front forearm on the front side and draw your back arm across the ear starting an extended side angle on this side. Reach, good, and then inhale back up, warrior two, and we'll bring our back hand down the back thigh, lift that left arm up, little reverse. Okay, back to extended side angle, forearm on thigh, arm across the ear. Good, everyone, come back. So it's just like a little flow. Again, into that reverse. And then now you're gonna slowly come back, forearm on the thigh. We're just gonna hold it on this side, just a few extra breaths. And take that back hand and you're gonna bring it to your back hip. We're gonna come in slightly differently on this side. Back of the hand to the low back or to your left hip. Palm is facing up. Now we're gonna rise into reverse. Reach that left arm up, come into the reverse. Reverse warrior. Keep that back hand either to low back or to front hip. Okay, everyone, slowly come back. Now form on thigh, just to come out. We're gonna bring our right hand to the ground, lift the back heel, and go ahead and take your left foot to meet your right foot. Roll to the outer edge of your right foot, left hand to left hip, or bring your knees down, tuck your toes, pivot your right toes off to the right, left leg up. Either option is fine. Maybe the top arm lifts. And then everyone, slow and steady, come back, downward facing dog. And we're gonna do a short downward facing dog. What that means is you're gonna just walk your hands back so that way your heels are on the earth. Make sure your feet are almost as wide as your mat. So if you gaze back, your um, feet are about two inches from either side of the mat. So outer, outer hip width apart. If this is hard, you can always have a block under your hands at the wider setting. So either here or palms to the ground, okay? Now we're gonna do just a little twist. Draw your left arm to the outer right shin or upper thigh. 
and come up onto your right fingertips. Bend the left elbow and gaze to the right. So it's almost like a wide legged forward fold now because you're on your right fingertips. And then go ahead and bring your left hand down on your fingertips and draw your right arm to the outer left upper thigh or shin. Bend the right elbow and gaze to the left. Okay, let's all come back down to all fours and to our forearms. Just as a little counter, big on our hands and move your hips from side to side. Let your head and neck relax. Now, you're gonna tuck your toes and slowly stand on your knees for a second. And you're gonna choose whether you're gonna sit on your heels, okay, with your toes tucked under. You're gonna do that foot opening pose that can be so challenging. Or if that's really tricky for you, you can have like a pillow or I've got like a couch cushion or a bolster between my heels and my sit bones that makes it a little bit more accessible. So you can either do like this, which that's the version I'm gonna do today, or you can sit on your heels. You could untuck the toes if you need to, but if you can keep them tucked under, I know it's not easy. We're gonna try and stay with the tucked under for just a little bit. So extend your arms out. We're still on our feet. And draw your left arm on top of your right. Give yourself a hug. Feel a broadening of the mid upper back. Now you can either stay here in the hug or if it feels all right, come up into the bind, reaching your arms up. And if you've got the bind, you're just gonna do a little side to side. If you're on the hug, you're just moving the body side to side. So try to breathe into your toes, into your feet, into your shoulders. Remember everything is temporary. Okay, let's come back to center, unwind. And now draw your right arm on top. Give yourself a hug, feel a broadening of the shoulders. You can stay here or come into the binds. Whatever variation you've got, either windshield wipers or that gentle side to side sway. Breathing in the mid upper back, unwind, hands down. And if you've got something there, move it, untuck the toes and gently tap the feet here. Tap, 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 tap light little taps and extend your right leg back. And you're just reaching, let me move that so you can see. So you're just reaching to the heel and going to the ball of the foot. Do that a couple of times. So you're just going back and forth here. Good, and then bring that knee down and then switch. A little reach here. Good, everyone, bring that knee down and find your way to forward fold. So step one foot forward and the other. Forward fold, the top of our mat. Bend the knees, inhale, rise all the way up to the sky, reach up tall, and bring the hands to the heart. So we're gonna just do two more balancing poses before we bring it down to the ground. So if you've got a block, your block or something to lean on, it will make this just a little bit easier, more accessible. Now, if you've got two blocks, you can separate them, which I like doing. So one under one hand, one under the other at the top of your mat. If you only have one block, just bring it in the center. So you've got either both hands to one block or one hand to one block, okay? So hands to your blocks. Step your feet back about a foot-ish or so and bend your knees so the butt is sticking out a little bit. From here, we're gonna bring our blocks to the right, a couple of inches, about four or so inches, and lift your left leg up. Toes are pointing down. Now we're gonna begin to bend that right knee and open the hip to the side. Slowly, so just playing with our balance a little bit, you're gonna begin to, some of you right away are gonna notice your left hand wants to go a little lighter. Maybe you wanna go up on your fingertips. Maybe left hand to left foot or left hand to heart. And then I was one step ahead of myself here. All right, so then maybe left arm up. You can stay there. The next option is to actually bring your left hand to your hip, drop the knee so the knee points down, the leg goes in a little bit, kind of curls in like that little curl we did at the start of class. And then maybe left hand to left foot. 
and see maybe you stop there or maybe you open. We were doing this recently, right? So finding a little balance, either hand to hip with knee bent, you could have legs straight, right? Any of the options. Okay, whatever is happening, if you've got hand to foot, gently release, hands go down to the blocks or blocks, block or blocks, and then forward fold. Head and neck is relaxed. I encourage you to have your block at the tallest setting and your legs a little bit more straight. Then slowly bend the knees and inhale, rise all the way up to the sky, reach up top. And bring your hands to your heart and hands to your hips. So now we're gonna add another balance that's similar but different. Okay, hands at your hips. You're gonna bend your left knee here. Open the left leg out a little bit to the side. Good, bring your left hand to the top of your left foot and let your leg relax. If you can't quite get it, you can just have both hands to the hips. So either both hands to hips or one hand to one foot and slowly begin to reach your right arm up. My arm might get cut off and maybe you're gonna come forward a little bit. Dancer pose. So it's similar to what we were just doing. If your hands are at your hips, you just have one arm reaching, back knee bend and one arm at the hip. Gaze to your hands, your front hand. Okay, everyone slowly come back up. Give the legs and arms a little bit of a shake. And we're gonna come back to our block, our blocks. It's a little kind of combination of uh, of poses here. So hand or hands to the blocks, knees bent. Remember you're sticking your, your butt out a little bit here. And now you're gonna bring your blocks to the left about four inches and lift your right leg up. So your left leg is your straight leg and then bend your right knee and open the hip. Right away, the body starts to come up a little bit. It wants to come up a little bit higher on your left or your right fingertips, excuse me. And maybe your right hand goes to your heart. Maybe that's where you stop today. If you wanna try the other option, you bring your right hand to your hip. And we've actually gonna almost come out of the pose to come into it. So you feel that knee drop and the leg draws down, kind of curling in like you're doing a little abdominal crunch. And then you bring your hand to your foot and then slowly open back up in slow motion. Let go of perfection. You could always come to a straight leg, more traditional uh, version of half moon if you want with arm and leg straight. That's also an option or hand to hip and knee bend. Okay, if you've got hand to foot, gently release and let's all come down into forward fold. With the block at the tall setting. Head and neck is relaxed. And bend the knees, inhale, rise up to the sky, reach up tall. And hands to the heart. Last balance, I swear, that we're gonna chill. Much deserved today. So hands at your hips, now you're going to bend your right knee. From here, you could just stay in this option, right? That's also welcome or you're gonna open that leg out, point the toes, and maybe get that right hand to right foot. You could stay here. All the steps are important. Reach that left arm up and coming into dancer, coming forward. Or, you know, you can have hand to hip if you can't get hand to foot with arm reaching, that's fine. Whatever you've got, bring your gaze towards your front hand a little bit. Just a little balance. Good, everyone. And then come back up. Whew. Slowly relax. Give the arms, legs a little shake. Saying thank you to your body today. <laughs> and let's come down to the ground. We're going to do a really lovely um, deep twist next. So I want you to have a bolster if you've got it, um, a block, or if you don't have a bolster, a couple of pillows is fine, or a couple of blankets. We wanna have a good amount of cushion. 
So have whatever you've got, either pillows, blankets, or bolster on um, the right side of your mat. And we're gonna come down to the ground with control. So come all the way down with control. Yeah, exactly. Nice, Eileen. Good use of your couch cushion there. <laughs> so straighten your right leg and you've got your bolster, pillows, or couch cushion just right next to your right leg, you know, parallel to it, like a couple of inches away, pretty close. Then draw your left knee to your chest. Hands to your shin, interlaced, and you're just pausing here for a few breaths. That right leg is engaged, right toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. Now begin to let that left leg go across the body. And you're gonna tuck your right hip under. So your right hip kind of tucks under and you let your left leg find that cushion that you're using. Now, if you need more support, so you could even use like your block under your knee and the cushion, right? So you could have like knee block or just cushion supporting the leg. So the upper right part of the um, kind of rib cage near the armpit, you wanna move that just a smidge to the right. So like when you're lifting your upper mid back and you're moving it just like a, you know, a half an inch to the right and you're gazing up to the ceiling, bend the elbows and just let your hands rest on your bed. So this is option one of this twist. You can stay here. Option two of the twist is to extend your arms out to the side, straight out from your shoulder. If that causes discomfort in either shoulder, just come back to option two. And we'll just stay with those two options. Let your eyes either close or soften. Five breaths. If there's any pain, please come out and just bring the cushion between your knees into that kind of twist. I'm showing it right now if you need a reminder of it with the bolster or cushion between. That is another option for a twist. See if you can invite your body to soften and settle into this pose. Take three more breaths on the side where every exhale you're relaxing and unwinding just a little bit more. Okay, when you're ready, you'll slowly unwind. And to come out, you're gonna just bring your feet on the ground with your knees bent. And you can move your bolster or cushion just a little bit to the side. Let your hands rest on the thighs. Let your back just settle from that twist for a couple of breaths. So you're just knees bent, hands on the thighs between side one and side two of the twist, okay? important when we do deep twists that we let our body relax between sides. When you feel ready and there's no rush, you'll move whatever you're using as a cushion, pillow, bolster, blanket, to the left side, right next to the left hip, and straighten your left leg. So your leg is just a really close, an inch or two to the bolster or prop, and draw your right knee into the chest. Flex the left foot, left toes point up. Couple of breaths here. Just feeling how the knee into the chest is actually such a great stretch to do. Then we'll move to the twist. So you slowly cross that leg to the body. You won't be able to go very far before you have to tuck your left hip under your bottom hip. And then find that leg so you feel that hip really lift off the ground you're kind of on your left side your right leg is on the prop and then here that upper kind of left part of the upper back you want to move it lift it up and just move it a teeny bit to the left just a little bit and then bring your hands to your ribs gaze is up notice how it feels let your body relax 
Remember, you can stop here, or if you want, you can extend your arms out, palms face up. I invite you to close your eyes or bring a really soft, relaxed gaze. And we're focusing on growing heavier and more relaxed. Each time that you exhale, you're actually softening into the pose. Just a little bit more. Five more breaths. Twisting of the spine is some of the most important movements that we can do, preferably if possible every day. But it's very important that when we twist, that we're doing it with good form because if we do it with bad form, we can actually hurt ourselves. So make sure there's no pain. If there is, back off. Just bring your prop between your knees. And then when you're ready, you'll very slowly just bring both feet down, knees bent. So you're centered here. It's important that the knees are bent, the feet are on the ground, and let your hands just rest on your thighs. Invite the low back to settle. Sometimes after twisting, it can feel a little achy. Let it relax. Let your glutes relax. And now we're gonna move into supported bridge, one of my favorite poses. So you, if you've got like a bolster or something, you can use this or you could use a block. Most of the time we use a block. But if you have a really solid prop, you are always invited to use that instead if you want. So you're gonna have your knees still bent and find a lift of your hips and slide either your block, the lower wider setting to the low back, or you could slide the bolster the wide way under the low back or your cushion. Once you find that position, it should feel really supportive and really nice with the glutes, the buttocks relax. Let your body almost melt into the block or prop. Take five breaths. Consciously feel your hips relax. I like to tuck my shoulders just a little bit under. A nice opening for the chest. Our palms are facing up. Hands a little bit wider than your mat. You're welcome to stay here for five more breaths. You wanna do a little bit more of an inversion. Just lift your feet up, the knees bent, and then straighten your legs up to the sky. Separate the feet about hip width apart. We'll take about 10 breaths here. Your gaze is just at your legs, your toes, or the ceiling. Okay, just a couple more breaths here in this bridge. See if you can allow the, the lower body just to be really heavy and relaxed. Feel this kind of dropping of gravity towards the block or prop. Then bend your knees. Bring one foot down, the other foot down. Slowly lift your hips, move the block to the side and come all the way down. Bring your feet as wide as your mat. Let your knees drop from side to side and your arms can be out like a T to windshield wipers. Then bring your knees into your chest, hands to your shins and do circles going in one direction. and the other direction. Good, everyone. Now slowly roll all the way to your side and we'll gently press up and we'll come to the best part, the last pose. So a couple of ways to do it, as we all know by now, if you want, if you've got two blocks, I really recommend Stonehenge today, where you have um, some sort of cushion, like a couch cushion, bolster, a couple of pillows on top. And then you can have a blanket for your head or you could have a couple of cushions under your knees. 
and a blanket to your head or at least one cushion to the knees. So remember, come to a hip and then come to your shoulder and then slowly make your way into the pose. These last few sacred moments are so important. This is the seal of the practice. So the yoga practice is a very intelligent design with lots of variation, of course. But the most important thing is that we actually seal our practice with rest. At a minimum, a few minutes, longer if we have it. And when we invite our whole body to rest, so scan it from your head down through your body to your toes and relax the whole body. But when we invite in that deep breath, the impact of the yoga practice is increased. I equate it to if you're taking a walk through the woods and you are, you know, working and you're moving and you're making your body sweat and you're there in the forest, so you're getting a ton of benefit. That's wonderful. But if you can do all of that and be present and receiving the forest as you're moving through it and noticing, that's what it's like to do full rest, being present and receiving at the end versus just walking through. going to share a quote as we're settling down in from one of my teachers, Megan Watterson. She said, this is from her new book, suddenly everything, the light in your eyes touches, is drenched with pure meaning because suddenly you're just you and you remember that this is all love ever asks of you. To be just you. Invite in that remembrance of your work and your wholeness for these last few minutes. Feel the breath moving through your whole body. Softening every part of you it touches. For this last minute, invite yourself to be fully present. 
receiving and relaxing completely. Very slowly begin to feel your awareness going back into the arm, to the leg, to the belly, to the back. And you can slowly make that transition, remembering the transitions are the most important where you start to move a little bit. Fingers and toes, taking a nice gentle kind of stirring of the body and maybe you can re reach and stretch if you like and then bring your knees in when you're ready we're going to roll to one side whichever side you're called toward in this moment and slowly press down through your hands and find a seat being present in the transition. Reclose the eyes or soften the gaze and bring the palms to face up, point your finger and thumb touch. Just acknowledge the fact that it is pretty incredible that we're practicing yoga today from our home. So just acknowledge really the, the full lineage of the teachings, those who have held them for thousands of years everything, the technology that made it possible for us to be here now. Saluting our bodies as well. And may we remember to practice and live our lives in a way that serves the highest and deepest good with harm to none. Draw your hands together at the heart and bow the head down. Calling your awareness in and out towards those we know and love and those we hold dear and those we don't know yet and even those we're challenged by. May we all wake up. May we all know ease, joy, justice, peace. May we all be free of suffering, harm, and pain in this lifetime. And may we all know freedom and liberation itself. Inhale, lift your chin, open your eyes. Thank you all so very much. So great to see your faces. Thank you, Daniel.